Hi, my name is Mark Gillen, and I'm going to be showing you data validation. The use of data validation, why we would use it, and I'll give you some examples as to it being used. We have a sheet here within this workbook where we have the first name, the surname, and the age. What we're going to do is we're going to work with the age. So we will limit the age as to the input by the user. Now, when we're using data validation, it's not just to restrict it. It's also for us to identify within a spreadsheet. So what we can do is we can actually look at a spreadsheet. We can look to see what data doesn't meet a certain criteria. Also with data validation, it's not just to restrict, it's to help the user. It's so that the person who owns the spreadsheet or collecting data within the spreadsheet gets the data that they require. So let's have a wee look at data validation. I'm going to select the cell that we're going to use and test out. Within the data tab, click on the data tab, gives us the data ribbon, and within the data tools grouping, we have data validation. Now, data validation allows us to restrict data or to, to set criteria for data uh, in various different ways. Within this tool here, we have a drop down that also allows us to look, not just to look at data validation, to actually restrict data validation, but we also have the ability to circle invalid data um, and then, of course, to clear those circles. What we can do is we can look at data to say, does it meet this criteria? First of all, let's look at data validation. Within data validation, we get three tabs. The first tab is the settings, the next is input message, and the third is error alert. Within the settings tab, it's the criteria. It's the, the criteria that we want to lay down as being valid. We can allow different criteria with different formats. For example, I'll go through this wee list for you. Any value, which is obviously the default, we can put any value into any cell, and then we can format it whichever way we want to within an Excel spreadsheet. So that is obviously is the default, but it's allowed. The next one is a whole number. What we can do is we can tell it it must be a whole number, so it can't be a fraction or a decimal, um, it can't be text, it must be a number, and it must be a whole. The other thing as well is that we can restrict as to the range of numbers. So we've got a usual with between, not between, equal to, not equal to, greater than, less than, and so on. So just the usual criteria that we can use here. Now we can set a minimum and a maximum. What we could do and what I would usually do is we'd normally put down a cell reference, which then means that if the criteria changes, you don't have to go through the whole of the sheet changing the data validation. It refers to a cell, so it's got to meet the criteria laid down within cells. There's a collapse button there that enables you to then select a cell and an expand button back out. But just to let you understand, first of all, how this works. I'll come back to whole number. Decimal would state that the figure or the value that's actually put into the cell must be decimal, not a fraction, not text. It must be a number that's decimal. A list, which we'll come back to and I'll show you the use of the list in a minute whereby we can actually designate a list within a range of cells, so it must be selected from that list, and we can set the criteria for that list as well. You'll see the default on most of these is ignore blank, because obviously you might want to allow a blank record to be put in, and if the blank doesn't meet the criteria, then you wouldn't want to possibly know about it, unless you wanted something in the cell. So in cell drop-down allows to drop down this list. Date. 
again, we can state our date or time. Um, there's time there as well. As to what we like, for example, it could be between um, a start date and the end date, for example, in a college. It could be that we have a start date of a course and an end date of a course. So we wouldn't want someone putting a date in for a student that's, a, that's, that's not attending because the dates would be incorrect. So the date somebody might put in is before the start date or after. Not something that we would possibly want. So time is self-explanatory. Text length, we can say what the text length must be or must be between or not be. And custom, where we can actually customize this and we can actually put formulas in. Um, have formulae. You can also have um, any formation of, of text, numbers, or any other criteria that you'd like. Let's start off with a whole number. Now, with the age here, what I'll do is I'll, we'll make it um, a minimum. Some of you might remember. Some of you might still be there. It's a long time ago for me. 18 to 30 holidays. So someone um, who's younger than 18, somebody's older than 30. Oh my goodness. Um, nowadays with ageism, I don't know the, if this would be allowed, but it's a good example. I'm sure there still is age restrictions, for example, if you were allowed in um, second high school children um, and excluding everyone else, for example. The next tab would be input message. So we've set the criteria. Just another wee mention here as well. Down at the bottom here, we've got apply these changes to other cells with the same settings. If we have cells next to the cell that has data validation that's similar to this one and, it's, and, and there's an age restriction, rather than us going through the whole data validation for every single cell, we could tick that and it would apply any changes that you make to the data validation to those cells as well. Obviously from here as well, we have the clear all button so we can clear the sets, we can clear input messages, we can clear error alerts on cells that have data validation set that no longer are required. So the input message, you can have this or not, but it's best to have it. Show input message when cell is selected. Rather than having text built around every cell, um, especially when you have a large listing, um, what it means is that we can, when they click on the cell, this message would automatically come up for the user. So it's guiding them as to what's required. So this one here, what we can say is um, age um, between 18 and 30. Restriction of age um, for this particular course is 18 and 18 to 30. Mark wouldn't be able to join. So next one is the error alert. This one is show error alert after invalid data is entered. We have options on this one, whether you want to say stop, don't go any further, um, have a think about what you're doing, or we've got a wee warning here. By the way, um, it's not correct what you entered, or a uh, very nice, like, by the way, the information you have not entered is incorrect. So stop, and it's not correct, don't go any further, don't leave it the way it was, because you won't be able to. The data validation will come up with this and it will not let the user just say, I'm putting this in anyway. They must follow the criteria. So, incorrect age. There is a, an age restriction. Please ensure the person is between 18 and 30 only. Re enter the age. And OK. So as you can see, the cell is selected. If I'm away from the cell, it's not selected. Uh, it won't come up with the message. So if I select the cell, it's telling me there's an age restriction. If I try to put an age in there, so let's um, put 
put my age here. Some will say definitely aye, that will be right. If only, I do remember that. Just 35. Enter. Oh. There is an age restriction. Please ensure the person is between 18 and 30 only. Re-enter the age. So it will let me cancel or retry. For cancel, it wipes everything out from the cell. I must try again. If I try it again, it will continually do that for me. Once the file is saved, the data validation is saved with the file. If I put the correct age in, then it'll be fine. So, my wish age, 21, everything's okay. And there we have it. Right. I did say that I was going to show you the other uses of this one. Um, and I'll just show you that a little bit more now. So within the next sheet, to identify, to identify anyone who's not the correct age. So therefore, these cells here, what I'd like to do is I'd like to know if they are within that age range. In fact, well, not within that age range. So again, within the data ribbon, which we're already on, within the data tools, we have data validation, and what we can do is to set the data validation. So the settings here, we're going to say a whole number between 18 and 30. And input message, well, we don't have to show anything here at the moment. We only want to actually find out at this moment in time, and we don't want to show an error message. So if we click OK, we don't know at the moment, and this is where the other tool of circle invalid data comes in. So because we've had we've got a data validation set, it isn't set to actually provide the information. It can be allowed. People will actually try to put things in there. What we can do is we've got data already, so circle invalid data, and it would let us know all of the records there within this list that do not meet the criteria of the data validation. So there's only two people there. What we can do is we can clear the validation circles so that we can move on from that. So it's only just the alert that's to let us know it's an analysis tool just to use for data validation. Okay, now for data validation. Within this here as well, we have um, these people who've got these ages and they would have to be checked. So in other words, if somebody's put an age and it's wrong, you want to then possibly find out who maybe possibly checked that age. So what we can do is we could do the list here. So what we'll do is we'll make this one here um, checks. And what we'll do is we'll put a wee list here of some names. So let's put Mark, we'll blame him. Jane, Donna, um, Phil, and Berta. So we've got a nice wee list here. So go to data validation, list, list the source, send the other sheet of checks, there's the list there, and again we could have an input message there, select from the list, however there will be a drop down anyway, so in cell drop down, so the input message if someone tries to put uh, data out with that value or if you want an error message coming up on that as well. So we can do that. Um, let me say um, select the check must be done by someone on the list. Please select the name 
from the list. So that's helping the user. So the error unidentified um, name has been entered. Please use the list provided. Okay. So now, if we come to a cell there, they are within the age range, that's fine. So it tells us here how to use the list. We can use a drop down. Let's use Donna and let's see the other one here as well. And if we try to put anybody else in, so let's try and put in George. Nope, can't do that. And it's the exact label that's come up for us is exactly what we put in to say it's unidentified. So they can retry. Won't let us do that, so you have to cancel. If they keep on retrying to put that in, it will not let us. So it's just to let you know, data validation does work. So cancel, select from the list there, so chain, and that's us use data validation. Try it out yourself, try out the dates, try out different combinations of data validation across different cells. And what you can do is you could even try the other little bit there, which I uh, spoke about, with changing the list as well. Thank you very much for watching. Have fun. There are files provided for you. Thank you.